Hello and welcome to Tech and Tesla Sweden. Today I'm actually uh, located in Malmö. I'm on a release of this car. So this is the Aura. Aura stands for Open Reliable Automotive and it's a part of the, the GVM brand. GVM is the Great Wall Motor, uh, a Chinese company that has been producing cars since uh, 1985. So Aura is their fully electric brand, only has electric cars today, only offering electric cars, nothing else. So EVs only, just like this channel. When it comes to specifications, this is the Aura 300 Plus, and that's what released in Sweden now. Sweden is the first market in Europe uh, to get this car. Uh, it, it will follow with UK and Germany very soon. So this is the first look at this car. And it's a European version with better suspension, updated interior materials, uh, better soundproofing. So it's like a second generation of this car. It has been available in, in China earlier, but now they are actually opening, opening the order books up uh, in Europe and spreading the word of the of the brand. And this is the, the logo. It's like an explanation mark. This car is called Aura Funky Cat in UK and has earlier been called in China Aura Good Cat. But here in Sweden it's called Aura 300 Pro. So 300 Pro is the first available version uh, on the Swedish market. And this one has a smaller battery of 4 to 8 kilowatt hours. That's the gross capacity and it's a LFP battery. So it can be charged to 100% every time. That's really good. It has a VL VLTP range of 310 kilometers and a top speed of 160 kilometers per hour. It's a front wheel drive vehicle with a electric motor that creates 126 kilowatts of power equals to 171 HP and 250 newton meters of torque. It doesn't have any frank since the motor is in the front and all the electronics is underneath here, underneath the bonnet. When it comes to charging, it has a classic CCS charging capability. So you have the type two connector for home charging and slow, slow charging at the maximum speed of 11 kilowatts. And you have the CCS part here. Uh, so the maximum charge power of this car is 70 kilowatts as a, as a peak power. And that's good for this size of a, of a battery. I mean, it's good enough. This is not, this car is not meant to travel around Europe. Uh, for longer road trips, it's, I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's more or less for, for family trips, weekend trips, uh, driving your kids to school, uh, grocery shopping, a perfect second car. So when it comes to the size of the car, it's really hard to tell because of the round and bulging shape. Uh, it look, almost looks like a new version of the BMW Mini. So this is clearly a market for the people that loves the Mini. I mean, this is more or less a premium segment when it comes to, to small cars. You will see it when it comes to the interior design. We'll look at that soon. So the wheelbase of this car is 10 centimeters shorter than the wheelbase on the ID3. So the interior space is almost the same, uh, but the the boot space is a bit smaller uh, than the ID3, but it's much bigger than the than the Renault Zoe. So you can see this as a Renault Zoe 2.0 that's more leaning towards a Mini. So it's a much nicer design and a much more premium car than the Renault Zoe. And I really like the the shape of it, the design, it's, uh, it's different. It adds a nice flavor to the market. And I think this is the coolest small car on the market for the moment. So for 
those that looks for a small, cool car with an attitude, with the, the sign language, I think this is it. This is what you have been waiting for. So let's have a look at the boot. The boot capacity of this car is 228 liters. Uh, that's not the biggest in the in the class, but that you have some 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 good space, and and you have some small amount of extra space underneath for storing cables and small things. Uh, there is no frunk on this car since it's front wheel drive. Everything is placed in the under the hood or bonnet. So it's equipped with bi LED lights, LED lights in front, and that's standard. And it has some funky light shows when unlocking, unlocking the car, a nice touch. And something else that's very special to this design is that there is no tail lights, at least not where you used to see them. It's empty here, you see? So it's a very specific design, original design. You have some smaller signal lights and the backup lights here. Let's see if I can. Make it flash, yeah, do you see it? Otherwise, the tail lights is actually located here. And you see the light show? So it's nicely and neatly integrated as a light bar underneath the, the glass of the boot. So you also see that it has uh, disc brakes in the front and also in the back and running on 18 inch wheels that's standard on this car. It's not as the MEB platform with uh, like a drum brake at the back. So real disc brakes at the back, at the front. And you have cameras surrounding the car on the mirrors in the back. And you have all these parking sensors around the car. You have one as usual at the windscreen with a rain sensor and also one placed lower just on top of the ridge racer sign. So the car is equipped with the keyless entry uh, as a standard. Just open it as usual and when you go, close the door and you press the handle and then it's locked. So let's check the interior. This is where this car actually excels. The interior is very nice. This is, I really like it. I think it's the best interior of this size of a car. I've never seen anything better in this class. I mean, look at the door trim. Please check the key is in car. Yeah, it's whining about the key. I think we should the put key the key in. in. Yeah. So this is one annoying Please thing. The key is in car. As soon as I open the car, it asks for the key. So let's put that in and she will stop whining about that. Back to the materials. Soft touch, soft touch, nice stitching. Soft touch could have a little bit more cushioning, but nice finish. No, no piano black plastics, it's nice and neat. You have a nice feel and everything. And when it comes to the chairs, to the front chairs, they are electrically powered, both uh, on the passenger side, but also on the driver's side. So that's standard equipment on this car, power seats in front. You also have seat heating in the front and steering wheel heating. That's also standard equipment. So everything is standard on this car. The only thing you can add or change is the, the exterior color. You can have this double color scheme with an ac another accent on the roof compared to the body. This one is a, a gray bluish color with a black roof line. So that's extra. And you can also, together with the exterior color, choose another interior color, a lighter color, for instance. But uh, that's the only thing you can equip this car with. Everything else is standard. So that's very great. It's easy, it's convenient, it's neat to order an Aura. You get everything from the start. So back to the seats. Very nice finish. 
nice color scheme, uh, nice stitching, nice accents. You can also adjust the headrest, both in the front and at the back. So let's have a seat. So when it comes to the interior, you have two screens, uh, two 10.2 inch screens, I think it is. One instrument cluster and one for the entertainment and settings. It's very neatly integrated to the, to the panel. Uh, when it comes to interior materials, it's soft touch all the way up here. It's, it's a nice feel and it's a premium, really a premium feel in this car. A lot better than I expected. I, I, I've been seeing, looking at pictures, etc., and other videos, but this really excels. Uh, it's another level for me. You have the air vents, nice and neat design. You have some cool uh, hard buttons or real buttons, starting and turning off AC or, or the ventilation AC, AC off. Uh, USB ports. A cigarette port. I don't know who uses that anymore, but at least you have the USBs. I would rather you have chosen USB-Cs, but this is good enough for charging, etc. You can also connect your phone for, for data. Uh, this car will be equipped with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, wirelessly, it's not available now, so I can't show you that, but it's coming soon in an over-the-air update for the Swedish market. So when it comes to gear shifting, you have a central compartment here, where you have the gear shifter here. You press it for parking, and then you turn it for drive, neutral, and reverse. Very easy, a nice feel. You also have a nice, um, wireless charger pad where you can put your phone let's try that out yeah it works and it also makes a sound in the car for that the the wireless charging pad is activated you also have some extra space under your armrest so you have a nice armrest you can't adjust the armrest but i think it's uh Nicely placed anyway, so uh, no need for adjustment for me. And one good thing to know is that this car has a five-star Eurank Cup car safety rating. So that's very impressive. It's a small car, but you still have a great safety. So this is a little thing here is actually a driver monitoring system. It has a infrared camera inside and it actually monitors the driving. You can deactivate that, of course, but here's the settings for that. It uh, warns you about distraction, so if you do a lot of other things, it will monitor you and warn you. Uh, fatigue monitoring and dangerous mo uh, behavior. You can even disengage the wireless charging. I don't know why you would to want to do that, but you can turn it off. And by the way, the entertainment system is running on Android. Uh, and that's a great thing. Uh, the software is really good. It's quick, it's responsive. You have a lot of functionality and let's hope for applications like Spotify, etc. in the future. We don't know that yet, but that can be a case since it's running Android. So there is a built-in voice recognition system. You just call. Hello, Aura. What's up? What's the weather tomorrow? Tomorrow in Loma looks like it will be cloudy with a high of 11 and low of 10 degrees. One nice thing is the, the steering wheel. I mean, it looks nice. It's very thin and narrow compared to other cars. Uh, and that's by design to keep it more airy and uh, more light. So that's by purpose. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is all the buttons here and you actually have a custom button on each side that you can connect to specific actions. 
Uh, for instance, when I press this one, it's activating the parking cameras. So here you have the backup camera. So uh, that's the, the back view of the car. You can switch the side by pressing uh, the different sides of the car. And you can also rotate it. That's really cool. That's a 3D view. There is also a 2D view. There you have it, where you can now. So we can see the different sides, the different camera views by clicking on the different sides of the car. Switch that to, to 3D and you get this view. And you also have this tire view. So I'm 193 centimeters tall. I'm gonna try to sit behind myself and see if I can fit in the back seat to, to measure, measure the back seat and show you how, how big or how small it is. So let's try that. I can actually fit behind myself. And that's good for this kind of uh, size car. I mean, uh, one thing that actually saves me when it comes to space is that I can put my feet underneath this, the front seat. That's a really good uh, thing. I mean, my knees are touching the, the backrest, but it's fairly comfortable for, for me as a, as a tall guy. And I can sit behind myself. So that means that you can drive this car uh, being for adults with no problem. You can even fit five people in this car. The back bench and the, the same design language follows. You have the nice stitching. Uh, the headrests are all adjustable. You also have an armrest in the middle. No uh, ski latch. It's a nice interior, even in the back. You even have some USB ports. One USB A port. That's better than none. And you have the same look uh, design at the, at the door trim at the back. The only difference is that you have hard plastic at the top. Otherwise, it feels and looks the same as the, as the front door. So when it comes to driving, I really like it in here. It's cozy, it's cool, it's trendy, it's a nice and neat design. Everything is nicely placed. It's a bit far to the screen though, but I have long arms, monkey arms, so for me it's not a problem. But I mean, if you have very short arms, it may be hard to, to reach the touch screen. Uh, but the UI and everything is really nice and with over the air updates in the future uh, it will probably get better all the time so now i have uh, i have set the car to one pedal driving that means that the regen will kick in uh, at a maximum power one thing though is that there is a slight delay uh, of the region, so the region will not kick in immediately when it release the acceleration pedal. It takes like a half or one second before it actually kicks in. Uh, I think that's on purpose. I mean, it's probably to, to give the driver and the passengers a more pleasant drive and not uh, uh, create this like brake and accelerate uh, behavior. Uh, for the for the the drivers that are not used to the region, so when I release it, it kicks in like a second later. I release, and now it kicks in. Well, I'm not sure if it goes to a fully stop. Let's try that immediately. I'm releasing the acceleration pedal. No, so it doesn't go to a fully stop. 
So it actually goes down to like 11 or 10 kilometers per hour, then it just keeps rolling. When it comes to comfort, I mean the seat, the seats are, are great. They are exactly what you can expect from this type of a car. I think they are comfy and nice. They give you enough support. Uh, they are not too soft, not too hard. I think it's a it's a good setup. And uh, by the way, they both both the passenger and the, the driver side has a heated seat seats and heated steering wheel comes as a standard uh, equipment on this car. Back to, to, to the Comfort. It's... The suspension is good. Uh, there is no suspension sounds. Uh, it's fairly silent, at least when you drive slow. Uh, the sound insulation is what you can expect uh, in this car class. It's not as silent as an EQE or the Tesla Model Y, for instance. It's a bit more noisy than the ID3, but I think the noise uh, created in this car when, when traveling in, in higher speeds is most due to the Chinese tires on this car. Uh, I think a good thing uh, should be to, to ship this car with European more silent tires because uh, there is a, a bit of a tire noise while driving in higher speeds. Uh, so while driving slow it's really nice and the suspension setup is it's good. It's not too hard, it's not too soft. It's more to the to the stiffer side than to the softer side. But I like that, I don't like too soft uh, suspensions because that will make me ill while traveling, not that kind of American suspension. So this is a bit to the stiffer side. But I mean, I love to drive around in this car. It's really nice, it makes me happy. Uh, maybe this is uh, my next car instead of the ID3. Maybe I should get rid of the ID3 and order a Aura. What do you guys think? This car has a lot more character than all other cars on the market. And I think that's fun. It's fun uh, that someone is trying to do something different and create uh, some kind of a lifestyle and a attitude to a car. And it's clear that Aura really had worked with that aspect. It's not only a car, it's a, it's a kind of a feeling, it's a kind of a style in, within the package of a car. So when it comes to the consumption, uh, my average consumption for driving around in like one or two hours is 18.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's in the ballpark that I expected. It's uh, around the same as for the ID3. A little bit higher maybe, but uh, that may be uh, caused by, I mean, I'm not used to the car and I haven't been driving it uh, that long yet. So in, in Tesla language, that's uh, 188 watt hours per 100, 100 kilometers. So you can easily expect a consumption under 20 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Uh, I mean, during summer and a little bit more hot weather, I think it will like uh, go down to closer to 15, 16 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And during winter time, uh, this specific car doesn't have a heat pump, but I know you can order cars with heat pump. That means that during winter time, the consumption will be a little bit higher. So then maybe you can expect a consumption over 20, more towards 22 
or 23 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. And that will of course uh, affect the, the range. Uh, so the VLTP range is uh, 310 kilometers uh, specified. So you can achieve that during summertime in good conditions. That's uh, perfectly possible. But during winters, you can expect a shorter range. Uh, and uh, during cold winters, um, you should probably more or less count on like 200 or 220 kilometers in that ballpark. And this is not a long distance travel car, so keep that in mind. So let's try the smart cruise control. So now it keeps the speed and also turns for me. So there is a slight turn on the road. I'm not touching the steering wheel. Let's see what happens. Yeah, it breaks, it breaks. Nice. So it actually braked and start deactivated the smart cruise control. control is active. So we actually activated the same way as you activate uh, autopilot on the Tesla by double uh, tapping the lever uh, on uh, uh, behind the steering wheel. So this car comes in a nice package. Everything is standard uh, here in Sweden, at least. And the starting price is 412,000 for for the three for the Aura 300 Pro. They're also releasing their new phone app soon, and I have tried it out. And really, I can't show you, but it really looks great. I mean, it's it works uh, very well. It's quick and responsive. You have a lot of functions like preheating, cooling, uh, charging schedules. Clo opening, closing windows, locking the car. Uh, so everything you need in the application. It's, it's a really nicely done design. It looks great, it feels great, it makes me happy. You have this round and nice shapes together with uh, the sleek design and soft touch materials almost everywhere. Uh, it's, it's a good package, let me see it that way. So I think that's about it. I just want to remind you of subscribing to my channel and give me a thumbs up. It will help me to, to grow this channel uh, to create more content. So speak to you soon.